Kiteboarding or kite surfing is a sport that involves using wind power with a large power kite to pull a rider across a water, land, or snow surface. It combines aspects of paragliding, surfing, windsurfing, skateboarding, snowboarding, and wakeboarding. Kiteboarding is among the less expensive and the more convenient sailing sports. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will dig into the history of kite surfing. Much of this growth is directly attributable to more recent advances in technology and safety features, making the sport far more user-friendly. Despite its recent popularity, the fundamentals of kite surfing, or kite sailing as it was originally termed, have been around for quite a while. In fact, they are traceable to 13th century China. During this time, kite sails were utilized for transportation purposes, added to canoes to increase the speed and stability of the vessel. This functional design remained relatively unchanged for about five centuries. In the 1800s, George Pocock used kites of increased size to propel carts on land and ships on the water, using a four-line control system, the same system in common use today. Both carts and boats were able to turn and sail upwind. The kites could be flown for sustained periods. The intention was to establish kite power as an alternative to horsepower, partly to avoid the hated horse tax that was levied at that time. The buggies could travel at near 20 miles per hour. Reports indicating that the Charvelins passed a mail coach, the fastest passenger transport at the time, and even the Duke of Gloucester, a breach in etiquette that after required the buggy to stop and let the Duke pass by again. Later iterations saw the introduction of a four-line control bar for steering, combined with a T-bar for directing the carriage and sudden braking. Not surprisingly, the Charvelin was difficult to control, although it did effectively avoid tolls that at the time were leveraged against horse-drawn carriages. The utility of kites was further refined by Samuel Franklin Cody in the year 1903. Cody designed kites that could lift people or man-lifting kites. The notion was adopted by the military as an alternative to balloons for artillery spotting during World War I. In the late 1970s, the development of Kevlar, then Spectra flying lines and more controllable kites with improved efficiency contributed to practical kite traction. In 1978, Ian Day's flexifoil kite-powered tornado catamaran exceeded 40 km per hour. In October 1977, Gilbert de Cedrianus Panhuis, Netherlands, obtained the first patent for kite surfing. The patent was for a water sport using a floating board of a surfboard type where a pilot standing up on it is pulled by a wind-catching device of a parachute type tied to his harness on a trapeze-type belt. Although this patent did not result in any commercial interest, Panhuis could be considered as the originator of the concept of kite surfing. Through the 1980s, there were occasionally successful attempts to combine kites with canoes, ice skates, snow skis, water skis, and roller skates. Throughout the 1970s and early 1980s, Dieter Stressiela from Germany developed parachute skiing and later perfected a kite skiing system using self-made paragliders and a ball socket swivel allowing the pilot to kite sail upwind and uphill, but also to take off into the air at will. Stressiela and his friend Andrea Kuhn, Switzerland, used this invention also in combination with surfboards and self-made land buggies. The modern sport of kite surfing originated around 1995. Two brothers, Bruno Leonu and Dominique Leonu from the Atlantic coast of France, developed kites for kite surfing in the late 1970s and early 1980s, and patented an inflatable kite design in November 1984, a design that has been subsequently used by companies to develop their own products. In 1990, practical kite buggying was pioneered by Peter Lynn at Argyle Park in Ashburton, New Zealand. Link coupled a three-wheeled buggy with a forerunner of the modern parafoil kite. Kite buggying proved to be very popular worldwide, with over 14,000 buggies sold up to 1999. The development of modern-day kite surfing by the Rousselaires in the USA and the Lehigny brothers in France carried on in parallel with kite buggying. Bill Russeller, a Boeing aerodynamicist, and his son Corey Russeller developed and patented the kite ski system, which consisted of water skis powered by a two line delta style kite controlled via a bar mounted in combined winch slash brake. The kite ski was commercially available in 1994. The kite had a rudimentary water launch capability and could go upwind. In 1997, the Lehan New Brothers developed and sold the breakthrough Whippica kite design, which had a structure of preformed inflatable tubes and a simple bridle system to the wingtips both of which greatly assisted water relaunch. In 1997, specialized kiteboards were developed by Rafael Salas and Laurent Nass. By the end of 1998, kite surfing had become an extreme sport, distributed and taught through a handful of groups and shops and schools worldwide. The first competition was held on Maui in September 1998 and was won by Flash Austin. 
Starting in 1999, kite surfing became a mainstream sport with the entry of key windsurfing manufacturers, namely Nash and Neil Pride. Single direction boards derived from windsurfing, and surfing designs became the dominant form of kiteboard. From 2001 onwards, twin tip bidirectional boards became more popular for most flat water riders, with directional boards still in use for surf conditions. In 2005, Bruno Lehenu developed the bow kite design, which has been licensed to many kite manufacturers. Bow kites provided up to 100% D-power, so they were much safer to use for beginners and less experienced kite surfers. The first bow kite widely available was the Cabrina Crossbow. In May 2012, the course racing style of kite surfing was announced as a sport for the 2016 Rio Olympics, replacing windsurfing. However, after a vote by the General Assembly of ISAF in November 2012, the RSX windsurfer was reinstated for both men and women and kite surfing was excluded. There is currently no schedule for including kite surfing as an Olympic sport. By 2013, over a dozen separate kite surfing styles have been created, including wave riding, freestyle, wake style, course racing, speed, downwinders, jumping, air style, wake skate, and kite cross. A wide variety of kite types are now available to suit the various kite surfing styles, including sea kites, bow kites, delta kites, hybrid kites, foil kites, and specialized light wind kites. While beginning as an extreme sport, kite surfing today has become quite safe and only continues to grow more and more as barriers to entry continue to decrease. Hope this video added some value to your thoughts. Do share your views in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so and hit the notification bell. See you in the next video.